Pathfinder LEDs give your Goldwing or F6B a clean, modern look. They outperform your stock halogen bulbs. Plug and play installation means there's no splicing of wires required. You're going to be able to see better and increase your visibility to oncoming traffic. And because LEDs take less power, there's less draw on your battery. These Pathfinder LEDs can work in your high and or your low beams. As an added bonus, they also work with your Keyson headlight modulators. Your Pathfinder LED kit comes with everything you need for plug and play installation. There are two high powered LEDs. Attached to each LED is a Jet Pro heatsink. Further down the line, you'll find the LED drivers. And finally, the H4 connectors that will connect the LEDs to your Goldwing electrical system. A detailed installation reference sheet is also included in your kit for written information. Prepare your LED kit for installation by removing the LED driver from the back of the LED. You'll also need to unscrew the Jet Pro heatsink from the back of each LED. Be careful not to remove the white thread lock material during this process. Removing the low beam bulbs on your Goldwing takes a little patience. You just reach up underneath the handlebars up toward the front of the fairing. Now, if you look up in there, this is what you're going to see. You see basically the H4 connector on the back of the headlight bulb, and there's also a rubber boot that surrounds that uh, connector. Now, here's what it looks like with the plug unplugged. And there's a couple of little tabs on that rubber boot. You simply pull on those, and that boot comes right off. With the rubber boot removed, you can now see the metal retaining spring. This actually holds the bulb in place. And if you mash on that little part where the arrow is, you push it toward the front of the bike and then down toward the floor. It kind of will swing out of the way and release that bulb. Now you have to do this by feel because you can't really look up in there and do it at the same time, but you will get it done. And then the bulb will come out with the H4 to H7 adapter attached to it. If you look at the base of the LED with the heat sink removed, you'll notice that the base has a tab, and this must be in the 12 o'clock position when you install the LED into the headlight fixture where you removed the bulb. Now, once you have positioned the LED back into the fixture, you'll need to reattach the spring clip by swinging it over and pressing it back into place as shown here. Once you've done that, then you slip the rubber boot back over the wire and press it into place so that it is secured also. Next, we must slip the heat sink over the wire and onto the back of the LED and then screw it into place firmly, as shown. Reconnecting the LED driver is easier to do from the front of the bike because the wire will be hanging down where you can see it. Now, the connector for the driver is keyed so that it will only go back together one way. With the two halves connected, you can now re-screw the locking collar back into place. Here you can see the LED driver has been reconnected. Locate the female H4 connector on the motorcycle that we removed when we removed the headlight bulb and attach the male H4 connector from the LED driver. The LED driver can be mounted to the inside of the fairing in such a way that it won't interfere with the front forks and the steering of the motorcycle. The same is true of the H4 connectors and all of the wiring. You basically are looking for a flat place to mount the LED driver. One of the tools that I like to use to help keep wires and connectors out of the way of the front forks are these adhesive backed clamps. You can attach these anywhere you need inside the fairing to route your wires and connectors through them. Now here you can see how I've used these cable clamps attached to the inside of the shelter. We're kind of looking down through the right side tunnel uh, next to the front forks. You can see how it's keeping those headlight 
uh, wires out of the way. Now there's a one a little bit lower down holding the LED block wires. So they're very flexible and you can use them in a lot of different places. To mount the LED driver to the fairing, you can use these 3M adhesive pads. However, I prefer the 3M dual lock fasteners. They're kind of like a real heavy duty weatherproof Velcro and they can come apart if need be. You can buy these at any hardware store. Here I've attached a dual lock fastener to the back of the LED driver and another piece to the inside of the fairing. You should be able to turn your handlebars lock to lock with no wires or connectors hitting anywhere. The good news is the installation of the high beam LEDs is virtually identical to that of the low beams. If you know how to do the low beams, you could do the high beams. The bad news is, unless you have small hands, you probably won't be able to get into the cramped spaces to get to the high beam bulbs. So, if you have a glove size larger than a medium or a large, you probably better leave this to a professional installation. However, I'm going to show you how I installed the high beams on my 2012 Goldwing, which is also the same as it would be for an F6B. Starting on the right side of the fairing, I'm going to remove this black plastic trim piece starting at the corner and pulling up firmly and you'll see that clip come loose. And then working your way up the piece, you kind of push in and there's some little tabs that will release. Now you'll notice on the very front part, there's also a little tab that slips into the front of the shelter. Using a 5 millimeter Allen wrench, I'm going to remove the two bolts that hold the headlight adjuster panel in place. With the two bolts removed, you can now lift up that panel and underneath you'll locate a wire harness. Pull on the gray portion of the clip and you'll be able to disconnect that wire and set the panel off to the side. Now, this bolt right here has to come out and then there's another bolt up here, and you see it's the one that's attached underneath this wire, this little harness strap. And we're going to use a socket, an 8 millimeter socket, to get that bolt out and this bolt out. And once we remove those two bolts, we'll be able to get this, uh, this unit to, to move around and become free. Here you can see how I've kind of maneuvered this, this uh, unit out of our way enough to where I can now kind of get my hand up in here. And I'm gonna... This picture shows the right side high beam and you can see just how cramped the space is. You've got a piece of the frame, you've got some a lot of cables and connectors so you do have to have small hands to get to this but it is identical to the low beam setup. To access the left side high beam we start by removing the left black trim piece just like we did on the right. You'll notice I start at the outside corner and lift up firmly. There's two clips and tabs that hold this in place as you can see here. And then you work your way from the outside pushing in and to release the tabs and you'll notice again at the very front there's a tab that sticks into the shelter to hold it in place. So you want to make sure you always start at the bottom and work your way up. Next we have to remove the glove box and there's four little plastic rivets and you push down in the center of that rivet and that will release it and you can use your fingernail kind of lift it out and just keep them off to the side. Once, once those are removed you can just lift the glove box out of place and make sure you disconnect any wires that might be holding it in and then just set it off to the side. Now we need to remove the leg warmer switch assembly. Here you see the wire with a barrel at the end and on the right you'll see a green tip that fits into a plastic stay and these have to be removed. It just kind of pops out of the little holder there. You can see the little ring that kind of, it kind of snaps in place and then once you do that uh, you can reach around here and might be easier to do if it's in the open position actually. Like that. Okay. Remove the leg warmer switch knob by just giving it a firm pull. It'll come right off and set it off to the side. Using a small flathead screwdriver, you can pry off the plastic bezel 
for the leg warmer as shown and set it off to the side as well. Use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screw that holds the switch assembly in place. With the leg warmer switch removed, you can now access the left side high beam bulb. So we're going to remove this by putting our fingers under here and releasing the little clips. You can see it coming apart here. And just pull it all the way up and then pull it out. And here you can see the clips uh, along the back side. Next we have to remove the glove box and there's four little plastic rivets and you push down in the center of that rivet and that will release it and you can use your fingernail kind of lift it out and just keep them off to the side. Okay with the clips removed we can now lift out the glove box checking underneath for any power connectors that need to be released. And there are now we need to remove the leg warmer switch assembly. Here you see the wire with a barrel at the end and on the right you'll see a green tip that fits into a plastic stay and these have to be removed. It just kind of pops out of the little holder there. You can see the little ring that kind of it kind of snaps in place. And then once you do that, uh, you can reach around here and it might be easier to do if it's in the open position actually, like that. Remove the leg warmer switch knob by just giving it a firm pull. It'll come right off and set it off to the side. Using a small flathead screwdriver, you can pry off the plastic bezel for the leg warmer as shown and set it off to the side as well. Use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screw that holds the switch assembly in place. With the leg warmer switch removed, you can now access the left side high beam bulb. The right hand glove box is held in place with two Phillips screws and two plastic rivets. These must be removed before the glove box will come out. With the glove box removed, you can now access the right high beam. 